It's been three years since the world burned. It was Argus, the Watchman system given control of the Solar Defense Force. Dr. Mason said it was inevitable, that it was the nature of all complex systems to grow beyond their original intended purpose. But then, hindsight is easier than foresight, and caution is always the first victim of progress. We don't know how long it took for it to decide to turn on its masters. Once it did, they say the war, if you could call it that, was over in less than 72 hours. 72 hours for the Earth Defense Force to be vaporized by an automated fleet of their own ships, and for centuries of humanity's achievements to be wiped off the face of the planet. Those of us spared from the destruction would subsist on a meager existence beneath the ruins of civilization. For three years, we hid, foraged, survived. Until, below the ruins of New Alberta, we found it. A massive weapons research and deployment facility called the Bow. Nearly a mile long, protected by the mountains above it from the orbital strike. We only knew about it because of Griffin. Some stubborn, dogged resolve in that old war horse that kept him searching since the first days of our exile. Hidden deep within the heart of the facility, we found the Arrow. A light space fighter with a singularity-driven core. An engineering marvel, making it the fastest and most maneuverable spacecraft ever conceived. I was a pilot before the world was turned to ash, ferrying payloads to the orbital platforms that represented our first steps to the stars. But this was like nothing I've ever flown before. Only a few weeks from completion, the world burned before it could make its first flight. And it's why I'm here now. As the only member of our group with any flight experience, it falls to me to shoulder the burden of what comes next. To take the arrow and bring the fight back to Argus. Three years ago, it won the battle it started with us in 72 hours. But the war it started isn't over. For 72 hours from launch, Nadia. One last chance to use the simulator. Roger that. Engaging the sim now.
accelerator channel is primed. Gap is open. Coordinates set. All systems are green. Arrow one, ready for launch. Good luck. Here goes everything.
orbital window achieved. I'm breaking Atmo. Good work. The scope's clear. Take a breather while you can. You're not out of the woods yet. You've got to clear the Badlands before you can engage the sublight drive. The Badlands. The orbital graveyard 2,000 kilometers above the Earth's surface left in the wake of Argus' onslaught. A sea of orbiting debris traveling around the planet at over 15,000 kilometers per hour. The core's magnetic field should protect you from the smaller debris, but you'll need to watch out for anything larger. And the ray scattering from all that scrap should limit Argus' ability to track you.
some demand for payload pilots out here. Argus has strategic installations among the outer planets of the Sol system. It spread its resources across half the moons between Jupiter and Neptune. Listen up. The sublight drive has limited jump capacity. I estimate you've got fuel enough for two, maybe three strikes. I've charted two possible courses for you. That sounds like a half measure no matter how you slice it. We knew this was going to be a limited action, Nadia. Not a suicide mission. With your limited jump capacity, you can hit the forge on Io and the relay on Titan. Or we can set our sights inward, hit the facility on Umbriel, and then take on the fleet in Saturn orbit. Both routes are risky. Dr. Mason and I are of differing opinions here with regard to which course to take. Commander. She is of the opinion that taking the fight to Argus early on will give us the best chance to take it down. I feel, however, that taking out the forge and the relay will offer us the best chance to make a serious dent in its manufacturing capacity while living to fight another day. And the third option? What about the third option? We can hit them all. Nadia. We ran the numbers, Nadia. There isn't enough juice in the capacitor for more than four jumps, and life support won't last more than a week. It'll take seven years at full burn to return without sublight capability, and I'm fairly certain your air won't last that long. But you don't deny that we can do the most damage by doing the most damage. Which means we lose our only spacefaring asset in the process. And that is assuming the unlikely event that you could accomplish such an endeavor. In the best case scenario, even if you succeed despite the odds, we lose the arrow and we lose our pilot. Look, it would be different if we had time to get all of the Arrow's weapon subsystems enabled prior to contact. Some of the components are actually designed to utilize the armament system to feed back into specific components within the Singularity Core, if we'd have the time to enable them all from the start. Don't forget what we talked about, Nadia. Keep a level head. I remember, but I'm not a soldier, and I'm not a scientist. How can he be so stoic all the time? All of us lost everything. <sighs> Very well. You know where we stand. But, uh, Commander... She makes her own choice. Once the die is cast, we can either choose to help her succeed, or accept defeat.
Nothing in pursuit. Argus is likely aware of you at this point, so we need to consider our strategy for a moment. What do you mean? With comms down, it's likely anticipating further attacks, so it's going to be shoring its defenses. Meaning we use this as an opportunity to take the fight to Io. Io, volcanic moon of Jupiter, a molten hell world where the Vulcan forge processes the naturally occurring polysilicate isomers to create the sturdy alloys that comprise the hulls of everything, from the smallest drone to the largest cruisers. We can use this gap in communications to take out a pillar of its tactical drone production chain. The facility maintains a perpetual holding pattern above the Ionian South Pole. It was well fortified before the war, but we have no idea if Argus has made any changes in the interim. I guess we'll find out. I'm reading your systems are prepped for jump. Initiating. Two directions at once. I'm here. Good hunting.
Roger. Leaving the I.O. perimeter now. Good work. Where to next? <sighs> Umbriel, largest of the Uranian moons. We believe Argus has stowed the anemone in one of the satellite's extinct volcanic tubes. The... anemone? A massive mobile tactical drone manufacturing element. Highly specialized, well-armed, and defended by a telescoping carapace. Why am I going after a drone factory? Don't we have bigger fish to fry here? I thought we were knocking out its resources. I've been... Reviewing my prior research into Argus's activities since you decided to change the scope of your mission. Really? Yes. And, upon reflection, it appears there was more going on here than we realized. Currently, Argus operates via conventional nuclear fusion and solar capture. Unburdened as it is with concerns for organic life support, it's been able to reconstitute and restructure much of the previous research and tactical technology to perform other functions within its new scope. Efficient as it has been, it was still adapting our technology out of necessity. But your encounters thus far have made it clear that it started producing its own highly specialized units. For what? Remember what I told you about complex systems? Well, this is probably the most impressive example of emergent growth we ever could have imagined. She almost sounds impressed. Spit it out. Those legions of drones you're destroying, they aren't inherently tactical. They're designed to be networked, hence why you always encounter them in groups. They're deployed in mathematical clusters, triads, quartets, sextets. They work together as a functional unit, but not for offense or defense. Like an organism. Individual cells form functional groups that we call organs. Organs in turn work together to perform more complicated functions that they cannot accomplish individually, like expelling waste, cleaning the blood, or processing energy. Argus is... Taking the next step. I believe it's attempting to deploy a Dyson Swarm. Wait, a what? A Dyson Swarm. An orbital megastructure composed of tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of individual energy collectors networked in a geometric formation around a star. Conceivably, this could supply essentially limitless amounts of energy, harvested from the sun, transmitted wirelessly to the Argus Central Network. Essentially, making it unstoppable, it would eliminate its current reliance on the interconnected resources that we've been targeting. Even before the war, we lacked the manufacturing capacity to create something so massive, it was beyond our industrial capability. At least for another 500 years or so. I've had enough speculation. Am I good to jump? The supply system is primed, yes. Engaging. Wait, you've only got enough power for...
This is Arrow Actual. We read you. The anemone is neutralized. The next stop is Titan. Back to Saturn? Correct. We have pinged the Argus Core cruiser in the moon's orbit, so we've plotted a trajectory that will land you on the far side. You'll need to make a suborbital approach beneath the moon's cloud layer to avoid detection. Then utilize the launch window on the opposite side to bring yourself in beneath the surveillance net. Our previous strategy relied on a transorbital approach, but that may be too risky. The moon's atmosphere is composed of storms of liquid methane. Our hope is that it gives you enough cover to sweep through, relatively undetected. But make no mistake, visibility will be poor, and there is an enemy presence you will have to contend with. As long as it evens the odds, am I good to jump? Correct. This will be your last jump, Arrow. Confirmed. Engaging. I've got visual on Titan. Adjusting trajectory for high-speed atmospheric traversal.
received. I'm leaving Titan's ionosphere. I've got the Argus cruiser in geosync above your position. There's nothing between you and its immediate perimeter. It worked, Nadia. The door's unlocked. There are no signs of any additional defenses. Roger that. There are no comms once you enter the cruiser. You need to make a beeline for the aft core section and destroy the Argus Unity Cluster. It's got an independent defense system, and it's shielded. Understood. Good luck.
You did it. The entire Argus network just went silent. Topside patrols ceased minutes after the explosion. We're getting reports. All of the autonomous units just went into standby mode. So we... We won? Yes. With Argus gone, humanity has a chance. Nadia, I'm getting some anomalous telemetry. You need to reroute power from the sublight drive immediately. Dr. Mason... Critical event in progress. It's going to overload. We knew this was going to be a one-way trip, Doc. I think I'm going to take a nap.